Welcome back. Today we're going to rip apart an IKEA lack floating shelf. Hi, and welcome back to Gosworth Handyman. Today we are going to have a quick look at probably the most popular shelf in the world. It's an IKEA, as I say, ugh, IKEA lack shelf. Whoops, nearly dropped it. These things, 10 quid for a floating shelf, they're so cheap. If you're not aware of how these things work, there's basically a metal plate that goes in the wall and then this slides over, I'll show you in a minute. But they're incredibly cheap. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more towards the end of the video. I know you're just dying for us to cut it in half and see what's inside it. They say that these are rated to either five kilos or 15 kilos, obviously, depending on what the wall's made of. I weigh about 80 kilos or thereabouts. I don't wanna break it before I've even cut it in half. That would be a, a disaster. Can I take my weight? There we go. That's my, my feet are off the floor. I don't think you can see my feet are off the floor, but I promise you they are. Not bending very much considering. Right, let's rip this thing open. Before I start, I just wanna run the metal detector over it, check there's no metal in this. I'm assuming there's not, but I don't wanna get halfway through and for the blade to get jammed on some weird sort of metal support that they might have put inside it. Seems all clear. Right, good to go. Go, ladies and gentlemen, check that out. <laughs> you clever. So basically what we've got here, in case you want to know, I'm sure a lot of people are already aware of this. I did actually think this was gonna be cardboard. I knew it was gonna be a honeycomb kind of mesh inside. It's, it's not a huge surprise. You can't make a piece of wood that light by using solid wood, but it's not even cardboard, it's, it's paper. Well, let me just... It's literally paper. And this will probably apply for all lac furniture. The inside of it is literally paper. That is very cleverly designed. I'll try and pull this apart a bit further in a minute. I'll show you first what I would typically make a floating shelf out of, okay? Or what I would make like an alcove shelf. An alcove shelf for me would be a piece of 18 mil plywood on the top normally. I'd have a 20 mil framework, something like that. And I'd probably have like six mil on the bottom. So my non-structural side, the thinnest of the thin wood that I could get away with using would be six mil on the bottom like that. Any less and you run the risk that it's gonna start sagging downwards, you know. Check out what this is. Okay, so we've got, we've got paper in the middle, watch. You can literally stick your hand straight through it. But look at this. It's like a hardboard. I don't know if that's MDF. It looks like MDF, but uh, maybe if anyone from Ikea ever watches this and tell us, it looks like about three mil, but let's check. 3.6 mil, 3.6 mil MDF, or whatever that is. It's some sort of hardboardy MDF stuff. So 3.6 mil there, 3.6 mil there, paper, in the middle. We've then got chipboard supports here and here, which is where this would normally slide in. So interesting that it only goes into half of it as well. I wonder why that is. I'm not quite sure. I would expect it's because, I bet this is routed out. This will probably be put on a big machine that just routes out 
this entire section in one big strip. It's much easier than trying to drill it out in a hole because then all you have to do, you can get like massive strips of, of whatever this is, this chipboard, and run it through a machine all in one go with a, a rounded router bit. A bit like, uh, well, kind of, kind of like that, but without the bearing on the bottom, but kind of a, a rounded bit, a bit like that would, and it would probably, I'm guessing here, but this is, I'm just, I can't think of any other reason why that's not got wood on, on the sides, why, why they wouldn't drill it out. I think it's so they can make these much, much quicker because they can just route that out in one big, however long these come in, and they'll come in probably, what, four, five metre lengths, maybe even longer. They might do it in like 10 or 20 metre lengths of, of this stuff here and just run it through a like a profiler or like some sort of routing machine that'll take that groove out all the way along in one go. Where's the, that's the front, sorry. That's the back. So, on the back side of it, we have a strip of chipboard on the back, which looks like it's, it's tricky to, I can't really get the calipers in. I would have to chop this in half. Let's chop this in half. What we've got there for the back bit is, looks thicker than 12 mil, but let's see. Pretty much bang on 12.5 mil. 12.5 mil chipboard on the back. We've got this little reinforcing block thing here. I'll need to smash another piece out to find out how that big that is. Interestingly, we've got this bit of chipboard on the edge. I don't know if you can see. So for some reason, they've painted that on the inside white. I don't know why. If anyone can reply in the comments as to why they would bother, because believe me, if there's not a reason for it, these are produced in the millions. To get these down to a price point of £10 per shelf, I don't if you listen to podcasts that I do with Peter Millard, we were talking the other day about how much it costs to make a shelf. The materials alone for me to make something like this, I mean, just the materials, you're looking at about 20 quid to, for me to make a floating shelf and completely finish it, not taking into account labour. So to knock these out for 10 quid a shot, and to make money off it. They are getting produced in gargantuan volumes. Trust me on that. So I'm not sure why, why would they elect to paint that bit in there? They're not gonna do it for no reason. I need someone to tell me that. I can't work it out. The only thing I can think, and this is a total guess, is that it's painted on both sides and it's something to do with not being able to see this corner piece. What, because these corner pieces are uh, routed at an angle to get the kind of slightly beveled edge on it, if that makes sense. So the only thing I can think of, when they put that bevel on, maybe if that wasn't painted, you would see a strip of unpainted material down that little corner. That's the only thing I can think of, but if anyone has any better ideas as to why they would paint that bit, please pop it in the comments. Let's see what else we've got. So this bit here, if anyone's interested, is 28.5 mil. The overall shelf thickness, by the way, I didn't tell you, is 50 mil thick exactly. And that's to 0.2 of a millimetre. That's exactly 50 mil thick. Impressive. This little bit on the edge, by the way, I'll have to include this side laminate bit. Obviously you can knock off a mil or so for that. Exactly 10 mil on that edge, but that includes this bit of laminate stuff that's on that edge. I need to chop this in half so we can see what this piece is here. I'm not moving the camera. Just another like 12 mil piece by the looks of it. Maybe 10 mil. 
Ten and a half mil that bit. Reply in the comments if you can work out what this bit's for. Maybe I'm missing something obvious, but I know obviously, because that would go, that goes in there like that. I think it's just to give a, a little flat section that actually hits against the wall, because the only bit that's going to hit against the wall is going to be that bit and the very thin three and a half mil MDF or hardboard or whatever it is on here. So I'm assuming that that's just so that you've got a nice little flat bit of wood that actually sits on the wall. Maybe without that it wouldn't sit on the wall very well. I think that's what that's for. I don't think it forms any sort of... I don't think it's structural in any way. I don't know, can you see that bit there? I'd love to see the production process for something like this. Obviously they've had to drill this bit here, but it's only 12 mil that, so that's easy to drill. It would be a lot harder to have to you know, you'd have to have a great big drill bit going perfectly straight all the way down there. It's much easier to just put this as a routed piece all the way through. Yeah, there you go. There's not a lot more to it. Let's see. I'm, I'll see if I can get um, the top and bottom of it somehow. I want to show you the honeycomb. Oh, here we go. And get this apart. It's enough to show you. Enough to get inside it. That's what they're made of. The side bit here seems to be a kind of plastic material that's glued on. But the actual, the shelf top and bottom seems to be painted on. It's not a foil. It seems to be obviously sprayed onto these uh, boards to give that finish. But that's like a plastic material on the end there. So there you go. That is the anatomy of an IKEA lac floating shelf. I've got a love-hate relationship with IKEA. Our house is full of IKEA stuff, but as a joiner and trying to make stuff that's of decent quality, you can't compete with, with this sort of stuff, you know. 10 quid for a shelf like that, but they've got the materials down to the absolute bare minimum of what you could get away with. An MDF or whatever it is, some sort of board out there and your paper inner. It's basically three millimeters of board and paper. That's what it's made of. That'll be the case for pretty much all of your lac type furniture at Ikea. And I'm, you know, I'm not having a pop at Ikea. They've hit a price point here of 10 quid for a shelf. And I think they even do lac tables for like five quid each or maybe even less than that. It's, it's criminally cheap, but they fill a need, I suppose. <laughs> Feel free to rant about Ikea in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. See you next time. Bye.